When the cooling of sky is stormbound and when the long trottenish ridge is clagged in cloud, try heading west to Dunvegan, where two curiously flat-topped hills offer a pretty good alternative. More and hell of all Beck. You can see them from much of the, the, the west side of Sky, and they really mean the big altar and the little altar. Come and join me for a round of Glen Osdale over the two tables. Both hills are isolated remnants of the vast basalt plateau that once covered much of sky, and have little to do with the notion that God once sliced off the summits to make a place where his servant Columba could lie down and rest. As you can see, we chose a pretty wild and windy day for our traverse of MacLeod's tables. Even the stone shelter is rocking in the wind. shows that in the days when people named these hills, our, our Gallic ancestors weren't really interested in the heights. In fact, I doubt very much that they could even um, work out the heights of hills. So the height of a mountain was completely irrelevant. And uh, hell of a uh, more gets its name, even though it's lower in height, because it's broader, it's bulkier than hell of a bay. These certainly aren't high hills, and at 469 metres and 448 metres, McLeod's tables don't make it onto any major mountain list. But since you have to climb them from sea level, and since both hills require a bit of a walk-in over boggy moorland, the ascents of Helvel Vor and Helvel Beck make for a strenuous five or six hour day. The bonus? Should you be blessed with better weather than we were? The wonderful views of sea, coast and mountain, that special malt blend that makes hill walking a sky such a memorable experience. Mm -hmm. 